Go ahead, Mr. Here Lipton, I am well, with a loving well, family, uh, a career, how do you make a up job, about a life, and I'm not melting down good. because a furry like said history. something. That's and this is the problem I have with all of you cocksucking idiots bringing up Vita every time you beef with me. You drag the trauma of his victims out for a gotcha on the guy who tried to help them. You are an unrepented, immoral scumbag, and the better off the world would be if you turned yourself into a statistic tonight. Somebody needs to lay hands on you, frankly. Like, you're so goddamn stupid. And you don't care what Vita's done to these people. You don't care about the children he's preyed on. You just think it's some sort of gotcha on me because I made you butt hurt. Dick up with my family. Bring them into it and see what happens. I am literally sitting in here with 600 or 867 viewers, and after it, people are going to watch this video, and you're going to be the laughing stock you should be. I hope you like all the attention you're getting, Mr. Roast Game, because this is the most you've ever gotten in an entire miserable life. Maybe I ought to shove you in the freezer. We exposed Vita four days after we found out in 2020. It took you but days to remove a child predator when you knew I think it was it like... It took you days? Probably, days? Days? It should have taken you five like goddamn days. seconds! You are the mo one of the most hateful pieces of garbage I ever knew. To gaslight you, you'd have to have an intelligence to begin with, Mr. Intellectual, which is why you're scared to get in call, because you know I will rip your throat out. Because I am pissed. I am sick and tired of deranged lunatics like you deciding that the best way to beef with me is to make comments about my family. Because you find Vita, ah, ah, you, you do Vita for some years, yeah, before I ever found out what he was. How did I facilitate it? I am calling out people from Camilla Cuevas' server who knew, knew a child was being groomed, sat on it for years, stayed in her circles, filed no reports. How is that irony of that versus me not knowing something where people got hurt? And you find it amusing. You find the grooming of children amusing. Somebody needs to choke the life out of you. But no, I, I think if you guys ever hear on the news, man in Texas goes on doom-esque rampage killing pedophiles, it's going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> Man, literally too angry to die. <laughs> Got a rip and tear. And you know what? I dare the courts to convict me through from here and uh, have a battle plan and a game plan ready for the weekend. Um, I'm not necessarily disagreeing here, and I think that's a good idea. But the one issue is uh, her mom doesn't like her being away from home. So I don't. It's going to be hard to sell. How are we going to handle that? Hmm. Hello everyone, I am Brian Mullins the Fox. Welcome to what will undoubtedly and actually be another part of the very first consecutive response video series I have ever made of all the five years in the history of Brian Mullins the Fox. Here's some context. To get things straight, let's establish a timetable for this entire drama from July 11th 2023 to now. But before I do, let's get into the backstory. I started my foray into bashing predator hunters on December 14th, 2022, where I criticized people like Kaz Warfox, Coyote Lovely, and everybody else that calls themselves quote unquote predator hunters merely for doing a shitty job. I also highlighted in that video that a few of you in neither servers or darker echo chambers may or may not have jerked off to the quote unquote evidence. That includes evidence of zoo content or diaper fetishes or whatever. Meaning that both sides have either a Chris Hansen or CIA complex to top it all off. I then made another video bashing predator hunters on December 19th, 2022 on the four reasons why it's legally impossible to quote unquote catch a predator and not be wrong about it morally and legally. By the way, back in December, I recorded those videos in the elevator at the Columbus Metropolitan Library in Dublin, Ohio, noting that, one, you can't use minors as decoys, a clarification will be made later in this video, but stick with me. Number two, you can't just fake it all and have us believe that it happened in the way you showed that it did. Number three, you can't just set up a minor to be endangered, at worst diddled, raped, and even murdered. And number four, that you can't just ruin somebody's life by getting them to do or say what you want them to do or say mentioning to catch a predator. The famous TV series hosted by 
Chris Hansen, because the evidence would likely be inadmissible to court if this is all just part of an entrapment scheme, or worse. Quick side note, there are actual predator hunters out there that got arrested for using a miner as a decoy, like for example Gary Ferguson. Kyle Swanson is an example on why entrapment is not a tactic that should be used, whilst also endangering a miner. Other examples out there exist, with well over 130 predator hunter vigilante groups in America, albeit on the rise. This is actually dangerous, because more and more miners are put at risk. More and more predators are either given what they want, or made to seem less weird or predatory in some odd situations. Seriously, why are people acting like such bots when it comes to anyone criticizing predator hunters on the internet and their needless paranoia and suspicion against us and slander it's fucking ridiculous i realized on december 26th 2022 that this asshole nobody named draven schuler blindly dismissed all of what i said in the first video of me bashing predator hunters and then accused me of being a quote-unquote furry pedo i then addressed that asshole in a drama rant video and put him in his place i then did some research on some of the most commonly regurgitated bullshit statistics when it came to pedophiles and sex offenders near the end of 2022 when i meant to all sex offenders i don't just mean child predator sex offenders there are sex offenders who sexually assaulted men, women, and even children. Not that I'm just counting them off for the sake of nitpicking or cherry picking. Then on January 3rd, 2023, I made a video reading an article giving the basic misconceptions a well-deserved debunking and even made people aware that predatory minors exist where a minor is groomed, diddled, or even raped by a more dominant child or minor, or also known as juvenile sex offenders. And so far in America, there are well beyond 100,000 of them. I went off in a passionate rant while essentially saying in that video that not all child predators are sex offenders and vice versa. Because, of course, there are predator hunters that deny this. I'm not just strawmanning people, I'm just giving a basic summary. And finally, on January 4th, 2023, I premiered my last video as a part of this foray into bashing predator hunters and predator hunting in general across the board, giving a well thought out explanation on why social media platforms are getting gradually harder against people who do this kind of content. Using adults as quote unquote minor decoys, using an actual minor as a decoy, false entrapment, bullshit pedo statistics, etc. Now, let's get back to what led up to me and Lyle Convoy having fake drama on the internet, alongside with many other degenerates. I have watched Lyle Convoy's videos since I was even made aware of his existence by Silverfox1232, of all people, over the Antunes drama video he premiered in May of 2022. As time went by month after month, I was binge watching his streams, some of his videos, and even watched the whole Vita video that Queen Serafina made with Lyle Convoy back in 2021. I was made aware of the first accountability and responsibility stream somewhat after he literally ripped right through and exposed Coyote for very shitty and degenerate things in late February of 2023. Then around April of 2023, Lyle Convoy made his third part of his accountability and responsibility series on Kaz Warfox and his degenerate den known as the Fox Mafia. But it wasn't always called that. It had a prior name years back. I chimed in and gave my two cents about it. This, of course, while I still had a Twitter account, which was mass flagged by a massive wave of angry lollycons on June 19th, 2023. I literally obliterated Vashland set myself, and then Frisky Doodle got raked over the coals by Thomas or Tom, which is simply just a shortened version of Thomas don't know why he would be bothered by me shortening his name anyway. This would have also been around the same time, the whole Brian Mullins the Fox vs. Fursky Doodle situation that never materialized after the release of his addendum to his Caswar Fox video. I was highly anticipating on the part 2, which is weird for him to take months and months and can only do it when he feels like it, instead of, you know, waiting for a call pizza was going to give him. The one with Vashland set being obliterated by Lyo and others. I already have that one downloaded why else would you delay the part 2 video if the call in question has already been released to the public 
by clicking the link and then downloading it on the mega.nz website by someone in the comment section of one of my not too recent community posts. Also, I've posted it onto my bit shoot, which I will link in the description box down below. As months grew by, I grew more and more impatient, and then on June 19th, 2023, on the same day my last Twitter account got permanently banned after nine months and six days of having it, I fucking lost all my patience, but that wasn't when all this drama between me and Lyle began. On July 11th, 2023, I hopped into the comment section agreeing with the sentiment that Jack had when it only came to Lyle and Peaches not being reliable sources. Kinda understandable to say that at least, but what does Lyle man do? He takes it personally quotes me out of context and took it personally while falsely insinuating that I supposedly said that Lyle used a miner as a decoy when that was clearly not what I said at all and that all predator hunters do that. Where did the word all come from? I don't see it. I said predator hunters in general, not all. I was talking about predator hunters in general, not all. He took that personally as well because he identifies himself as one without being self-aware enough of his dark past. Something that I will later expose on July 19th, 2023 with hilarious results. Lyle Man and a bunch of skid marks that then hurled themselves into any comment section they could before I blocked and hid them all, by the way. They said nothing of truth or value right before the midnight hour on July 27th, 2023, eight days after the fact that I initially exposed Lyle as a hypocrite working with a predator named Vita, unknowingly to be honest. Just because you didn't know he was a predator then does not undercut the fact that you still worked with one. Sharing my drama archives community post. On July 28th, 2023, after a while, I have had enough of his sycophants, trolls, and simps. So as soon as Lyle Convoy put out that community post, even though sometimes drama writes its own script of events to follow and take place, I decided to be a keyboard warrior then and only then because they couldn't stop talking about me in a negative light and a slanderous one at that. Lyle started this shit show, not me. All of this happening, not only because I only shared the same sentiment with someone else on Lyle and Peaches not being reliable sources, albeit adding my own bit into the mix, but also because I had the temerity to call predator hunting a hobby. Even though not all hobbies are good, not all hobbies are bad, but Lyle is too fucking retarded to differentiate now, isn't he? And to be fair, a really bad hobby. I never said he did it for pleasure, and you wonder why he has this medical condition where his blood pressure is off the charts. It could just be genetics, but it could also be because he has way too many hobbies outside of way too many jobs, but you never know. Lyo Convoy on July 29th. 2023 at 5 p.m. decided to host a live stream responding to only three preemptive jab videos of mine, including context. He decides to ignore the videos I made back in December, my video where I explained why having less predator hunters can, not will, can mean less predators, and other things that are important to act as underlying context for this entire drama saga, and even had the audacity to show my videos and the irony alert meme while your Thundercats themed stream template was literally obstructing it from view. Kinda shady, not gonna lie. If you're gonna do a live stream responding to a video, get rid of that ugly fucking layout or change it so where we can see the entire video or image without it being unnecessarily cropped or blocked off, fat fuck. Why do people call me a quote-unquote predator defender, a quote-unquote pedo, or a nonce? I have no idea, but the ad hominem attack is beyond egregious, it's slanderous as well. Also, given the fact that in 2018, Lyle told Mintart to do the unthinkable for content in the context where it's illegal, and not in the context where Mint could just do it herself and report it to the police herself where it is legal without having predator hunters doing it for her. As I will mention later, the irony, if any of you people can't grasp 
or understand what it is in general of Lyle's grandstanding is the part of this tweet where he said, and I quote, stayed around the people that facilitated this predation and chose not to say anything until you wanted to air out a personal grievance. Making jokes about the trauma of me being shoved in the freezer in the prank doesn't really help your case against me. It makes you little cocksuckers keep copy-paste coping in the comments. That and the fact that other people in the Senate are degenerates as well. This means that Lyle went after someone else on what you call quote-unquote X now, or Twext or whatever, for having done something he did years prior throughout 2018, 19, and a good portion of 2020 until early May. The timeline being that Lyle worked with this predator known as Vita until May of 2020. And you know what that something is? Yeah facilitating Vita's predation, literally making it easier for him to have been in your circle in the past whilst you were dealing with another minor at the time. Maybe had you not platformed or worked with this predator whilst this predator was friends with Mint as she was friends with him. Maybe you would have walked away from all of this scot-free. You could have exposed Vita long before you had to, but where would all the great content be though? It doesn't matter anyway. That's the fucking irony, Nim. Rod. And of course Vita suicide baited, that's why he didn't swallow the pills. You constantly play these semantic games with your retarded and illiterate audience full of degenerates and people with disgusting fetishes including that one fetish that Doodle Tones had a history of engaging in, attacked my character, slandered me, and even stooped to the level to try and cancel me in a community post concerned trolling about a post on DeviantArt I deleted years ago, but you brought that up because somebody else took a screenshot of it out of context. You can't just use a completely made up and out of context screenshot, let alone quote, to get an own on me. You failed to cancel me by the way, stupid. You were interviewed by a lolicon known as Sen, you are slash were in a cub lover server, and your accountability and responsibility videos and stream have started to lose all meaning and overall value to represent you and your character. Hell, not only have you quoted Vita in the past, you went with them as well. Also, addressing your recent copium stream where Peaches said it's okay to record someone's rape even if they were a minor and they could do that and report it themselves without any help from any of these quote-unquote predator hunters, you worked with an active predator or Vita told Mint to record her rape and then did absolutely nothing about Vita until you wanted to air out a personal grievance. See, uh, last night, Brian whatever the fuck the fox posted a video which was pretty funny considering but i saw this ending clip which interests me a lot so i asked him where did this clip come from and lo and behold he was very quick to find me that clip actually the entire fucking video and uh is it not weird enough that we had three grown-ass men one of them is a confirmed pedophile that is talking about absconding a teenage girl from her mother it, that's not weird enough as it is uh, let's 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 see this part uh, let's see this brilliant suggestion from lyle the boomer fucking groomer convoy or her other option is of course to set up that camera tonight and see what happens yeah that's one thing i think it should ha happen either way is get that camera rolling just in case because the moment that's caught on footage those are pretty salty cheap, aren't they do my ears deceive me? No, but you can. if you see the screen, you can see that it's recording. Yeah. So I flip it over. You better hope it doesn't fall over at night. Do my ears deceive me? Or are you telling me that you told that girl to record her rape? To essentially record CP. And here we have Vita giving some camera angle ideas for you, Lyo. I think it'd be better if she put the camera on that sucker, have it recording in the corner, minimized, and you're good to go. That might be worth a shot. I think no, it'd be better I, than... I have two things recording just in case. But at that point, that's his problem. Statutory rape uh, usually requires penetration of a sort. Oh, okay. There's probably some hefty charges you can get either way, though. Never mind how creepy excited Vita is about this. Let's kind of focus on the fact that this is your fucking idea. This was your fucking idea. This was your brilliant fucking idea, Lyo. You told Mint to record her fucking rape. Then you fucked up that whole thing with Vita and she went to go live with you? Does anyone else but me see how fucked up this is? I can't even put into words how fucking twistedly fucked up this is. What in the fuck is the matter with you? I can't fucking believe you. I can't fucking believe you.
you know what? You know what? I have no fucking words right now on how pissed off I am. Do you have any fucking idea how bad this is? You just literally told a fucking victim to record her fucking rape. And you thought it was the moral righteous thing to do for you or any time that you claim that you have any fucking morals? I don't want to fucking hear it. I really don't. You are no better than any of those fucking degenerates that you claim that they are the worst. You're no better than them for fucking doing this. This is why you are trying to silence me, Cass, and multiple others, which you failed miserably at. This is the exact reason why. So that way people will fucking find this. And it wasn't us who found this. It was Brian Muller of Fox of all people that found this. So I'd rather not hear any fucking excuses coming out of your ass. Fuck you. Fuck anybody who tries to say, oh, Lyle means well. I don't want to fucking hear any of it. I have an actual family. Unlike you, I do. And I know what's right. I know what's wrong. Unlike you, I don't make the stupid shitty suggestion like that. So I'd rather not hear anything from you ever again. Get bent, Lyo, you worthless, vigilante scumbag. Fuck you, motherfucker. Seriously, I'm done. Now, here is the more serious and dark part of this response video, but it won't be a proper part three had I not put this long clip in the video. It's from my recent video called The Truth About the Mint Heart Situation, originally uploaded on August 26th, 2023, sometime before Lyos Copium stream on me, Grimskull, and Neora started streaming and came out. Isn't it funny that my video came before his stream and they refused to watch the whole thing? I found that funny. <laughs> Oh, this is so stupid and I hate him. Can we just rid the screen of the facts? Sure we can. Now let's get to the super chats and fuck everything else. But with all that being said, let's play this long clip of the truth about the mint heart situation. Well, I never thought I would have to make another video about Lyle Convoy mentioning him, but this is far more important than you think. Grim Skull has done God's work. And so have I, Neora, and others for spreading awareness of all this shit. And even I see that you can't argue with people who've already made up their minds about you. All because of my edgy past. Instead of looking at me as the person I am now, note that this isn't necessarily a response video to Tom S. himself. He already apparently washed his hands and other people's hands of me anyway. But I have a more important theory as to what led up to the GoFundMe page, or really, rather, what options they thought were available after its launch. This is the truth about the Mint Heart situation, all of it unfiltered. So apparently, the GoFundMe page wasn't the only option for Mint, but at the end of the day, I wonder if Mint consented to Lyo's shitty suggestion slash idea or not. That's what matters the most in this story. It was among three options, one of which is just downright criminal. So let me sum all of them up here. To be clear, the other two were suggestions by both Lyle and Vita a day after the GoFundMe page was created on September 27th, 2018. Here are all of them anyway. Number one, do nothing. Don't even press charges against your abuser and move on long after being sexually assaulted, having known that their abuser has been in her life for 12 years. Or, number two, by the way, this second choice was an either or in and of its own right. Lyo told Mint at the time to either have them abscond her away from their abusive mother's home, the same one where their abuser lived, or set up and record Mint potentially being raped or at least sexually abused so they can supposedly have evidence to report to the police for her. I'm sure it's not necessarily to use it as evidence against her abuser because it's 
it's likely for a more darker, degenerate purpose. Worse than I could ever say, to be frank. The potential distribution of CP, regardless if it was intended or not. Lyo told her to record her potentially being raped, either on her phone or on another device like a computer that has a built-in camera, or both. Both of them even suggested the perfect angle for a dastardly and outright criminal attempt to abscond a then-to-be-minor or the other option if the first one fails. After all, Lyo did, in fact, tell Mint to do so, which is not only entrapment, but even worse, endangering a minor potentially for sexual gratification, instead of what they thought would be the end result. Strangely enough, having Mint record her rape herself and reporting it to the police if this were to have occurred at all is still risky but legal. Surprise, surprise. Even in her own state at the time. And I don't want to hear the whole excuse of he told her that because they wanted to use it as evidence against her abuser bullshit. Endangering a then-to-be minor is no excuse to trivialize the trauma of sexual assault victims like Mint. Unlike you, Lyle, I never told anyone to record either their own sexual assault or even worse, their own rape on camera, and then have to report it to the police for her myself. The idea of Lyo telling that to her in the past for the purpose of possible CP distribution, let alone obtaining it illegally, instead of having her do the work herself so she can try and get justice against her abuser, makes me want to throw up. Now let's define statutory rape, since they brought it up in the original call slash recording, and also because it's not just concerning sexual assault at this point. Statutory rape, to sum it up bluntly after having watched this video, as it is stated clearly on the board as, when a male defendant, 18 years old or older, has sexual intercourse with a female, victim under the age of 18 years old. Consent does not matter, it not being forced upon her or being forced upon her does not matter either. Just because it's not between an arbitrary age range for the victim does not mean that what would have ever happened to that then to be minor is anywhere near justifiable or logical even. So in ensuring that Mint didn't show that she didn't consent to this potential rape, Lyo told her to record it if their abuser dared to try and rape her in case if the first option of them absconding her from her abusive home failed. Because the justice system is completely fucked up. Him and Vita would have likely gotten away with it having told her to do so anyway. Because had Mint shown any sentiment demonstrating that she did not condone or they did not condone or consented to the idea of this even going down, it would have been a lot worse. If Lyle and Vida went through with this, the evidence of Lyle planning it would be inadmissible to the courts anyway, knowing that her abuser would have just easily washed his hands of them and gotten away with it scot-free. Not only that, it would have escalated to a full-blown rape and had her abuser done it again to humor Lyle and Vita in the most disgustingly predatory way imaginable, the abuse would not only continue, the trauma would be unbearable to recover from, it could lead to the victim herself or himself if it's a male, committing suicide. Because the pain and sexual abuse and torment is just too much. That and the idea of having their family abandon them and render them homeless too. And that is the most fucked up part about all of this. And the thing that just made me almost explode with unbridled rage at the time of even fucking taking this into consideration is that Lyo thought this was a good idea. Almost like I gave the exact examples that you wanted me to give you of endangering a minor or putting other minors in harm's way, Lyo. That's all I did. Let's be clear. If you are trying to bust a predator or expose an obvious sexual abuser, you don't become a weapon for which the abuser can use against Mint. Never give your enemy any ammo, even if it means you being your enemy's ammo at all. Or, number three, set up a GoFundMe page, later facilitating the online grooming of Mint Hearts, never reporting Vita for his predation for years, even when Vita got arrested himself, him staying in Lyo's circle until 2020, and 
basically filing no reports against Vita for his predation all this time, but only called the cops on him for a wellness check. That is an even more gruesome, more crushing irony than I have ever pointed out in the past. And I would be further remiss had I not have the opportunity to make a video like this. The way the GoFundMe page was even set up is suspicious. Mint had to dox herself because she couldn't do all of this GoFundMe stuff by herself legally. Vita was the adult and beneficiary in this situation. Vita was given Mint's now-to-be-dead name, Emily Talez, including her middle name, her mother's home address, her email address, and Vita, for some time before giving it to Lyle Convoy, was the one who was legally pulling the strings of this fundraiser. This despite the fact that minors can start up their own fundraiser, but would have to rely on an adult because she herself, at that time, didn't and can't have their own bank account until they're 18 years old. Their abusive mother couldn't possibly let that slide with her own bank account. I don't think Mint used her mother's bank account, did she? Because if so, I would agree with the abusive mother only on that point. If she ever did, she didn't. So at this point, Vita had to carry the burden initially. Then it became Lyo's burden six days later. And now, I will have to weigh in on what happened during and after the GoFundMe page's somewhat successful run. This one video or live stream from one of Anthony's other channels called Fan and Frenzy, on September 27th, 2018, he posted the notorious call where Lyle and Vita suggested that Mint should record her rape. On September 28th, 2018, Vita then confirmed that Vita is running the GoFundMe page after Mint apparently handed it to him. Six days later, Vita gave it over to Lyle not because he was too much of a pussy to handle the money as Lyle would have you believe himself. It was because Vita couldn't financially support the fundraiser, nor could Mint even when she was a minor. Knowing that Lyle was well beyond able to assist him with helping and accommodating Mint's financial needs. Just a week later, Lyle updated people on the success of the GoFundMe page. How and why did Mint move to Nebraska for? I will tell you. With the funds of the GoFundMe page, that was given to her by Lyle himself. When all of that went to shit later on. All of this moving out of Oregon was because Mint was somehow able to prove herself to be mature enough and with enough help from others who supported the GoFundMe page. All the while, her piece of shit abusive mother couldn't prove to the court that Mint was still an immature child who's still needing mommy's influence and guidance, nor could she prove that she's safe with an actual sexual abuser right by her mother's side. Just like any other state in America, Nebraska was generous to an extent when it came to minor emancipation. According to Nebraska law, upon emancipation, a minor may be able to establish their own residence, incur debt, or contractual obligations, consent to medical decisions, enlist in the military, marry without consent, be eligible for public assistance, the litigation and settlement of controversies, enroll in school or college, or acquiring property. And just a finishing touch to the timeline of the GoFundMe page, on January 23rd, 2019, Lyle, then under Vita's name, gave people the final update. How and why did it all go to shit? Because Mint, just like any irresponsible teenager in their teenage years, had the tendency to spend too much and just had a habit of impulse buying shit that she only wants and not enough of what she needs. And even if she bought whatever she needed to keep herself in a place to live, not being financially responsible enough and somehow having trust in Lyle anyway became the main two reasons why she needed to move in with Lyle. But the problem is, right around when she turned 18, or were 18, doesn't matter which, in 2019, she wanted to move in with Lyle. You know, the same guy who once told Mint to record her rape, Sometime in 2019, Mint moved in with Lyle, putting herself in harm's way because back then, Vita was still in Lyle's circle, and Vita felt betrayed that Lyle did this so he can have the last laugh. 
Vita being a convicted mom beater, computer thief, and an online sexual predator, this whole time made it all the more hilarious for the ever-growing crowd of Lyle Convoy supporters and snowflakes to support him even more. For two whole years, Lyle has let a predator into a then-to-be minor's life not only endangering her at that time, but even going as far as Lyle suggesting that she should record her rape in the context where it would have been illegal to. But Lyle's association with Vita doesn't go anywhere near as long as Vita's and Mint's terminally online relationship. Mint started her YouTube channel and DeviantArt under the name Mint25 or Jordan Doodles on YouTube when it was Mintheart back in 2015. And I hate to break it to you all, Jordan or Mintheart was friends with a predator just like Lyle and also allowed him to be in her online life for roughly four years, from 2016 to 2020, long before Lyo did. Vita was then outed from Lyo's circle in May of 2020. After four days of Lyle and the gang finding out that Vita has been a child predator this whole time, just as long as what Rosa Ray Ramsey's bad excuse would have had you all believe, had it not been proven to be false, or it actually having been eight months as opposed to four days. But again, two years for Lyle and Mintheart for four years is way longer and way worse than just eight months. This just further proves that Lyle Convoy is worse than both Rosa Ray Ramsey and Rebecca Starlight when it comes to handling a predator in their midst, let alone their circle, combined. Even then, Mint's friendship with Vita is actually worse than Lyle's involvement with working with him and facilitating the grooming of Mintart himself. Because, to simply put, Lyle wasn't even into predator hunting in 2016. He only got into it because of Toon Critic in early 2018. At the end of the day, what happened in the past happened in the past, and it should stay that way. And no one, not even Lyle himself, can wiggle his way out of this one. That is not only proof of Lyle facilitating the grooming whilst Vita is an active predator himself, he also told Mint to record her being raped or potentially raped or sexually abused in the context where it's illegal, not in the context where it's legal if she did it herself. Which is extremely fucked up, where it's almost fail to describe that magnitude of how fucked up all of this really is. Anyone who is unironically a supporter or fan of Lyle Convoy, unsubscribe. Please, God, don't even come back. And don't you dare think that you are smarter than you actually are just because you pulled the classic whataboutism card. And I have clearly asked Mitt about this in a comment where it reads, Jordan, did you ever consent to or ever noticed that he suggested to you to record your potential rape? I don't know how they're going to respond. There's no point in being gender neutral anymore, but I'm doing so anyways, so fuck it. So how and what she, at the time, would have responded with will be covered in the part 3 response to Lyle Convoy. If she says nothing, I won't be surprised. And if Mint slash Jordan does try to cover up for her own or their own mistakes in this situation or for the fact that she was also part of the problem for not only having Vita as a friend before Lyle came along, but then became one of Vita's victims. And then Lyle facilitating his grooming further proves that nobody can ever be innocent in this situation or a situation like this. Not even the victim herself or themselves. She would be the perfect candidate for the wall, just as much if not more than both the predator and the predator facilitator or predator hunter in quotations themselves combined if she decides to side with Lyle anyway, no matter what. I am not tolerating any of that what about is bullshit? I am sick and tired of having all of Lyo's little cocksuckers drooling in the comments, failing to think of anything argumentatively productive to say, nor will I tolerate any of the nonsense I see spurgs and spastics spurg out about in the Senate Discord, or better yet, community Discord as well. Helping someone to leave their abusive parents' house should not be used as a shield against the fact that Lyo did indeed told Mint to record her rape. Not only that, but he also facilitated the grooming of Mint by Vita. Nor should it be used as an excuse to exploit the very victim of sexual assault that you were there to help. 
supposedly. Mints may be a degenerate themselves, but it's no excuse to trivialize the drama just to get some sick Owen on her abuser, potentially recording CP. And that's why it bothers you, Lyle Man, because people like me are starting to question your lack of ethics in this one. And you had the nerve to call me a projectionist and a predator defender of all things. And for anyone else even suggesting or arguing otherwise, it's just going to make you look like you're coping even harder to your copium tank's content. This is why you don't just fucking sully yourself and being a predator's right hand man. In conclusion, that is the terrifying and sad truth about the mint heart situation. This video will make it into my part 3 response video to Lyle Convoy, not separating minor and major response videos anymore, because there's just no point in doing so. Now, I will sum it all up for you before I say my final words and close the video off. I will sum it all up for you. Number one, the GoFundMe page was never the first and final solution. Lyle and Vita had other sick and twisted ideas in mind, but unfortunately, it did come to a legal and financial cost. Two, the GoFundMe page, although it is somehow successful, says nothing about how all this shit impacted Mint to the point where this could have potentially been one of the reasons why she transitioned, nor will it, because her transitioning had almost nothing to do with it. Number three, Lyle and Vita are the reasons why Mint should have never trusted them, but she had no choice anyway. Four, it is never a good idea for anyone to tell you to record your rape in the context that it is in, even if it's for some sick own on a sexual abuser or predator and have them report it to the police for you. It's only legal if you do that yourself without the consent of your abuser in question. Although it is risky and calling 911 and reporting it right away is a much better option, that's how I just contextually put all of this into perspective. 5. Her abusive mom is still a piece of shit, but I can now understand to the fullest extent possible as to why Mint had no choice but to leave that abusive home. And finally, number six, this is why you never hand a minor to a predator. It will all come back to bite you in the ass. And in this context, it was Lyo's ass. And partially Mint's because she had him in her life or their life, given that they're trans now to begin with. I have about done what I needed to get done. So before I end this video, I want to thank you all for watching. And one quick message to Anthony or for no good reason. If you can't take the fact that Lyle told Mint to record her rape and have them report it to the police, themselves for her without being a petty fuck yourself. It takes two to tango, but it only takes one to put all the pieces to the puzzle together. Before I do close out the video, I want to make a thing or two clear. Guerra has multiple origins, including an Italian one. So I pronounced it in the Italian way, Guerra, and not the Hispanic or Portuguese way, Guerra. You don't have to call me a gringo. Because, of course, it's ridiculous to know that one surname can have multiple origins and a longer history. So, before this video ends and may contribute to a fourth installment to this response video series, I have to say that Anthony's livestream attempting to defend Lyle and himself is pathetic, and so is Lyle's recent cope stream with Peaches. It's abundantly clear that there really is no coming back from this for both Lyle and Anthony, since they're just both a bunch of degenerate predator hunter wannabe creeps anyway. So, thank you all for watching part 3, and may the fourth part be with you later on. I am Brian Mullins the Fox, signing out. See you then. So you're gonna see what these people are like and the stupid excuses they make. Talking about sexually assaulting people. Well, it's a joke, bro. It's a joke. It's not a joke. Especially when you say it in anger, it's venting. And if your immediate vent is to talk about how you want to sexually assault people, yeah, you're just a rapist without any victims yet. Huh? Huh? You're just a rapist without any victims yet. You must be from Reddit. So now you're catching the hands.